Welcome to this how-to video for Azure Virtual One. In this video, we'll show all steps to secure and connect two sites across different continents within less than 30 minutes. We will do this by connecting the sites with Barracuda Cloud Gen Vance site devices with multiple secure SD WAN connections to a Cloud Gen Vance server running in Azure Virtual One. First, a quick overview of Barracuda Cloud Gen Vance. Via the web console, the gateway service in Azure, as well as all site devices, are centrally managed. The site devices automatically connect to the gateway service using SD-WAN and best policy settings for security and application performance. Security enforcements happen either on the site devices themselves or on the gateway services in Azure, everything managed from a single web console. Optionally, access for remote users is also available. By default, direct internet traffic is sent out using the shortest available paths directly to the application. In this example, we will deploy two site devices providing full next-generation firewall security as well as secure SD-WAN connectivity across multiple connections to the nearest Azure Virtual WAN hub. Hi, my name is Felix Bultmann and I'm a Cloud Security Architect with Barracuda Networks. Today I want to show you how you can integrate Barracuda's Cloud Gen WAN solution with Microsoft Virtual One. For this, I already predefined uh, an environment, a virtual WAN environment, which is called my WAN. And in here, I defined two hubs. One is Americas and one is EMEA. Americas is in, is in the region East US and EMEA is in Germany West Central. To get CloudGen WAN up and running, we need a SaaS service first. A SaaS service, which will be used for configuring Barracuda's Cloud Gen 1 solution. For this, in the marketplace, we have to search for Barracuda Cloud Gen 1 service. Here we go. And now we have to subscribe to this service. This service offers us a management portal which we can use to manage the whole Cloud Gen 1 environment. I will choose a resource group which is called SaaS. The name is CGW for Cloud Gen 1 portal. And then the queue billing is on and review and subscribe now. Subscribe. That will take a few seconds. And now I have to configure my Barracuda account, meaning I have to connect this subscription to a Barracuda Cloud Control, it is called. So that is easy, so just click on Configure the account now. It will forward us to the Barracuda portal. So that is sas.barracuda.com. And now I can log in here with my Barracuda user. So that is admin at cuda.one. And the password is also then in my password safe. So we can sign in now. All right, so now what you can see is Barracuda's Cloud Gen WAN. You get the overview of the world. You see the gateway status. We have no gateways yet. A gateway is an NVA running in virtual one, in a virtual one hub. And sites. Sites will be on-premise devices, which will then connect to the gateway to be able to connect to the cloud resources. So the next thing we were going to do is we will connect this Cloud Gen WAN to our virtual one. For this, we will choose Gateways, click Generate Token, and we're going to copy this token to our clipboard. Then the next step is we will connect to the Azure Marketplace.
and in here we are automatically forwarded to the market marketplace and we see Barracuda Cloud Gen WAN Gateway. Let's create this one. Resource group will be my WAN. That is East US. Application name will be Atlanta. Next, Cloud Gen WAN Gateway. Our virtual WAN hub will be then Americas. That is a hub in that virtual WAN in my WAN. I can choose my scale unit, meaning the throughput, which is possible to go through, to send through this Cloud Gen WAN gateway. And just paste the token from your clipboard. View and create. agree the terms and conditions above create what is happening now now Azure will deploy a network virtual appliance connected to the hub in my one in the hub which was Americas so we can close that already and let's have a look at my one In Americas, it will start to deploy an NVA, a Network Virtual Appliance. That will take a few minutes, but in the meanwhile, we can already set up another gateway in, in Europe. So, generate token again, copy to clipboard. Let's go to the Azure Marketplace. Same procedure again. Create. Resource group will be my one. The region now will be West Germany, West Central. And let's call this Frankfurt. Okay, Cloud Gen 1 Gateway. The hub then will be in yeah, the EMEA hub in the resource group my one. So scale unit back, it will be two scale units. So that's the smallest amount of throughput we can get. That is one gigabit per second. All right, copy the token, paste the token, review and create. So this gateway will also be set up in this virtual one, my one. And let's go back to our Cloud Gen One management portal. Let's refresh. So that will take a couple of minutes. So there you can see already Atlanta. Hub is Americas, region is East US. Connection status is pending. That will change as soon as the NVA, so the Cloud Gen One gateway, is set up completely. While we are waiting till the gateways are up and running, the NBAs, I would like to create new sites. Sites, site devices, are devices on-premise. That could be hardware or virtual. So I would like to start with Pythonburg. So that's a site device which I will call Pythonburg. And Pythonburg is pretty close to Frankfurt. So the fastest way to go. So I have to define now a password. That should not be too easy. Next. So now I can choose the appliances which are already ordered. So that, what you see here, is the Zero Touch Deployment Portal. So as soon as you order a new appliance or a new VM, you will see this in here. So these are the serials. And now I can choose 
this device I would like to configure. I would like to configure this one, the 7044, which I know is close to Bad Homburg. All right, so now by choosing this device, I will configure this device. Although I don't have to have the appliance with me. And the appliance could still be in shipping. But well, I can pre-configure it. And as soon as the appliance arrives on premises, you need to plug in power and connect it to port 4 on this device. And this device will automatically connect towards the Zero Touch deployment portal and fetch the configuration which we are going to set up now. So number one, so I can define multiple ISPs up to 16 max. So we can have up to 16 active, active, active ISPs meaning also 16 VPN tunnels to Azure from one device. So next is one, let's call it TCOM. That is my provider. And I can choose now between dynamic, static, or wireless one. So 3G, 4G, and so on. So I will choose dynamic, meaning this one interface will use DHCP to get an IP address. That is port four. I don't have any VLANs, so next. So now, I define that I have one LAN. Well, that is now, let's call it FRALAN. And also no VLAN ID, but let's define an IP address. 10.11.11.1. Netmask would then be 24. Next. Just FYI, all the LANs and all the routes we define in the LAN section will also be propagated to virtual one. So they will be transmitted via BGP to the whole routing stack in virtual one. So we have to define a time zone and a DNS server, primary, and let's add a secondary as well. Next, save, done. So that is how we set up a side device. While that is so fast and easy, let's create another one. Let's call this Atlanta Office. Atlanta is then the gateway, of course. Root password, again, it should not be too easy. Next. Now I have to choose again an appliance. I will take this one, because I know that is uh, that will be stationed in Atlanta. Next. Again, LAN, I have uh, one. I only have one ISP in here. Next. And I will use also TCOM, which then is dynamic. Port 4, no VLAN IDs, next. Now a LAN. So next, so that is ATL LAN. Oops. That is listening on port 2, but I can define whatever port I would like to use. But for the ease of sake, let's take port 2. IP address is then 10.11.12.1 slash 24. Next. Primary DNS 8888 and 1111. Next. So summary, the name is Atlanta Office, that's a serial number, Atlanta is the gateway, and so on. Yeah, so save, meaning now, finish. So that will take a few minutes until the device will come up. Let's check the gateways. Yeah, the gateways are up and running here. So let's switch back to sites. That will be a few seconds. While we are waiting, let's have a look at security. So security, we have a couple of security features in here. We have site ACLs, meaning firewall rules based on the sites. So this rule, firewall rules will match on these sites. We have gateway ACLs, same with sites, but on gateways, meaning on the gate, on the NVA, we also do filtering. And let's create a site rule, for example, ATL to FRA. 
I would like to allow and I would like to choose a site. I could choose all sites or just specific sites, which I would like to do now. Let's say the Tomburg network for LAN should be allowed to connect to also a site to Atlanta office ATL LAN. Save. So now this is a firewall rule which matches on all sites, so the Atlanta office knows that that should be allowed, as well as the Bad Homburg office knows that that should be allowed. So UL filtering is plain easy, so you define things which should not be allowed, like malicious sites, that is predefined, but you could add more rules if needed. You can say, please allow, or block traffic. Block adult, illegal, and so on, just regular UL filtering, filtering rules. UL. So now this UL pattern matches for all sites and all gateways. We have malware protection, so antivirus, SSL inspection, so looking into HTTPS traffic, and we also have IPS included. All right, let's go back to sites. So let's check our sites. Our sites are online now. So now all networks behind the Atlanta Office site device and Bad Homburg Office site device are able to connect to each other. So it is from site over the gateways to the other site, meaning we have the any, 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 except if we have security rules. So we have now the connectivity through the NVA, through virtual one, and we have security, meaning ACLs, we have UL filtering, malware protection, SSL ins uh, inspection, and IPS. So thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you, bye-bye.